talking about we have a youth problem. Wow. He said to his uh, joint chiefs of staff <laughs> as he was planning a war, yeah. he said, we fighting the wrong war, telling them y'all involved in this left wing versus right wing controversy. He said, we got a youth problem. He said, we got a TikTok problem. Wow. Now, you may or may not know that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has filed a $4.8 billion lawsuit against the Anti-Defamation League of B'nai B'rith, the Simon Wiesenthal Center, Rabbi Abraham Cooper, because of the misuse of the term anti-Semite. Yes, sir. What do you mean by that, brother, the misuse of the term? I, this is what I mean by it. I mean that when Minister Farrakhan comes into black communities teaching us the truth about what has happened to us and what has been done to us, groups like the ADL use the media to tar him and to smear him causing people who would otherwise want to come and hear him and help him to stay at a safe distance out of fear of not offending the Jewish community. That's right. That's it. So that unique and particular kind of defamation mm -hmm. is the weaponizing of the term anti-Semitism. The minister at the close of his Savior's Day message, he reminded the audience that the Israeli Consul General, I believe is the title, for the city of Atlanta, Judith Von Ashores, said in an assembly of leaders, our greatest problem with America is black youth. And you know none of your Congress people or organizational leaders called them to be held accountable. What do you mean? our babies. You know, I know about you. <clears throat> me and you can beef. You know. <laughs> me and you can, you, we can be at odds. But when it comes to my babies, yes, you'll see another side of me. Yes, sir. I can promise you that. See? Yet we had a foreign government huh? <clears throat> say that our biggest problem with America it's black youth. Wow. And the folk you voted for didn't bat an eyebrow. Didn't call them into a congressional hearing and say, you got to explain that to us. What the hell do you mean? Yes, sir. Our children is your problem. But they are upset that we are in an age and a time with the atrocities that are taking place in Palestine and Israel can't be effectively hidden. Mm -hmm. And since TikTok is not owned by America, the people on TikTok aren't being censored by the same people who run Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So, so much truth is coming out that Mr. Greenblatt was decrying that there's an awakening taking place among the youth. And we can't trick them no more. We can't deceive them anymore. And I'm sorry, but my heart leapt up when I heard Mr. Greenblatt saying that because I reflected over the word of God. And as he was saying that we don't have a left and right problem, we have an old and young problem. My mind went to Malachi. Go ahead. Behold, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, I will send you Elijah. God, why are you going to send Elijah? Because he will unite the hearts of the fathers with the hearts of the children. And the hearts of the children with the hearts of the fathers. Yes, sir. Hmm? So Mr. Greenblatt was really upset. That the work of Elijah is taking place. <laughs> and you now see the youth coming into the wisdom of the elders because 
See, part of the problem sometimes, mom and dad, mm -hmm. is we have given our young people a comfortable life to the degree that they are somewhat oblivious to our struggle, mm -hmm. especially our struggle against the oppressor. So as I heard the minister say beautifully and powerfully, he said, you don't know the white man that your grandfather know. You don't know the white woman that your grandmother knew. You don't know the oppressor when he's being overt in his oppression. He hasn't changed that he is an oppressor, but he now has the ability to use science and technology see, to be an oppressor but not have his oppression, not have his deception, not have his evil easily observed. So now that you got all these videos coming out, I mean, I saw a video where an army besieged a hospital. Wow. Never seen anything like that. Because in war, believe it or not, war is not just indiscriminate killing. There are rules. You're not supposed to attack the Red Cross. You're not supposed to attack the Red Crescent. You don't attack orphanages. You don't attack grocery stores. You don't attack hospitals and maternity wards and cancer wings. But we've seen videos that Israel is doing this in Gaza. Mm. See? So you, you do yourself a favor and watch the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's Savior's Day message. Yes, sir. See? As he shares what is God and the Mahdi and the Messiah's view of this global phenomenon. Oh, we probably ain't been paying no attention, huh? We watching syndicated episodes of Martin. I understand. Yes, sir. I understand. I understand. Nothing wrong with that. But in reality, brother and sister, don't just be so in the need to be entertained that you absent yourself from being informed. Lord knows life is hard on the black man and the black woman. Sometimes the day been so long, the day been so wearisome, the day been so troubling. You just want to go home and pop your feet up and watch your favorite sitcom or your favorite TV or movie show. I get it. I understand. I'm right there with you. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> however, however, don't abandon the need to be informed. Yes, sir. The minister said, what you see taking place afar off is being planned against you and I right here. Yes, sir. Islam is mathematics. <laughs> well, we define Islam, let's define mathematics. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Mathematics, the group of sciences, including arithmetic, geometry, algebra, calculus, etc., dealing with quantities, magnitudes, and forms, and their relationships, attributes, etc., by the use of numbers and symbols. When you say Islam is mathematics, you are saying that. Islam is equal to mathematics. So it means in layman's terms that submission to God is scientific. Submission to God is logical. Obedience to God is rational, reasonable, measurable, quantifiable, structured and formed and involving relationships. Islam is mathematics. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad 
he begins with a particular application of this concept. He locates it in theology. He writes beautifully a message to the black man. He said the Christians refer to God as a, quote, mystery and a, quote, spirit and divide him into thirds. One part they call father, another part the son, and the third part they call the Holy Ghost, which makes the three one. This is contrary to both nature and mathematics. The law of mathematics will not allow us to put three into one. Our nature rebels against such a belief of God being a mystery and yet the father of a son and a Holy Ghost without a wife or without being something in reality. We wonder how can the son be human and the father a mystery parentheses unknown or spirit. Who is this Holy Ghost that is classified as being the equal of the father and the son? So, you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in a very early part of the message to the black man, he don't waste no time attacking the falsehood yeah. of our religious belief. Mm -hmm. Now, why did Mr. Muhammad have to come in with a sledgehammer and hit us over the head like that? <laughs> See, because, brother and sister, believe it or not, your concept of God affects every other area of your life. That's right. Do you, don't, do, reading this, didn't one of the first things jump out at you? Listen at what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says. We wonder how can the son be human and the father mystery? Any resemblance to any person's situation, living or dead, is not a coincidence. Because some of us didn't grow up. Our father was a mystery. So don't just think that these are religious beliefs that are somewhere set over here to the side, but you got your real life somewhere else separate and apart from that. No, they go together. Your belief and understanding of God is your mental foundation. And like any house, your life, if you build it upon a faulty foundation, your house ain't strong. So he has to begin solving the problems of his beloved people coming at the core of our understanding of God. He says that this teaching is not mathematical. Mm -hmm. And in Christianity, they literally embrace the idea that you really can't understand God. <laughs> they embrace that. Yes, sir. And, you know, it's intriguing to me. I'll be honest, it's puzzling to me. Because you say that you can't fully understand God. But God sent all these prophets into the world so people would understand him. Wow. He gave us all his scripture so we would understand him. That's right. He has said in the scripture that our lack of understanding of him is the root of our problem. Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. What knowledge? The knowledge of God. See? Yet, you say we can't understand him. Carter G. Woodson, in what has become one of my favorite quotes, he says, in theology, literature, Social science and education, radical reconstruction is necessary. Mm. This is from his famous book, The Miseducation of the Negro. And if you haven't read the book, you think he confines his concerns to the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, but he doesn't. 
Carter G. Woodson realized that black people have been miseducated in religion. Now, he ain't a paid spokesperson for the Nation of Islam. That's just the legendary and famous Carter G. Woodson. Yes. One of the founders of Black History Month. They began as Negro History Week. Well, this ain't no lightweight brother talking about, and then he gets specific. Because yeah. religion is broad. In religion, you have pastoral care. You have apologetics. You have uh, sacred languages. Theology is its own subsection of religious studies. Yes, sir. That's the study of God himself. Theo from the Latin God, ology meaning the study of. So Carter G. Woodson is looking at black people. He loves his people, but he realized we've been miseducated in the knowledge and the study of God. See? So, what is that? How did that get there? How did that get into the slide? That's just, just, just the Easter Bunny, I mean. You know, it's just the Easter Bunny. You know. He lays the eggs, right? <laughs> and we, we go and we hunt the eggs. Hmm? Look at what they taught us. And then we gave it to our babies. And then beat the hell out of them because they lie to us. Yes. Oh, man. But we bring them from the womb, lying to them. A rabbit laying chicken eggs. Oh, man. Heck, another character ended up in the slide. How did he get in there? He can't even, I like this picture because he can't even fit down that chimney. How are you going to get down that one leg at a time? Is he going to, you know how they had those little uh, tripods and stuff that fold back out 180 degrees the other direction? But after you work your 40 hours a week, then sign up for voluntary overtime. Yeah. Go work on Sunday to get double time mm -hmm. to make you a big old Christmas check. Look out. Mm -hmm. To buy your precious children Christmas gifts. Blood, sweat, and tears. Dealing with a supervisor that you don't get along with. <laughs> Not getting enough rest at night. See? Just to buy your children something nice. To give the credit to him. On Jesus' birthday. Wow. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> See, you have not been taught to think logically or mathematically about God. So you don't think logically or mathematically about solving the problems in your life. Then this is a real math conundrum here. He died on Friday. He rose on Sunday. He was in the grave for three days and three nights. Okay. A day is 24 hours. From Friday evening to Saturday evening is one day. From Saturday evening to Sunday morning is a half of a day. So, how did that get to be three days? <laughs> and I was fascinated as I was looking into this that there are not certain Christian apologists that are saying, well, really, he was crucified on Wednesday. Oh, okay, bang it up. I said, well, I guess we're just going to try to make this thing fit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, 
when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan say Islam is mathematics, you think that's some type of cult teaching. When the reality of it is, is that is the truth. And that truth is like what the great British writer, Lord Gordon George Byron said. He's the one that coined the phrase, truth is stranger than fiction. Wow. See? So to tell you Islam is mathematics, I know I'm up against all of this other illogical, non-scientific, non-mathematical crap that's in the minds of black people. Scholars, professors, doctors, scientists, PhDs come and sit in church pews and leave their scientific mind in the car. Got to. Can't explain it any other way. Because if you have studied all of these sciences, all of these mathematics, mastered all of these fields of study, you can't continue to believe what we were taught by the church. And I don't. This is not a railing against the church. I don't want to be misunderstood. Because the black church is not the author of Christianity. That's right. Mm. right. The author of Christianity, the father of it, is the Roman Emperor Constantine. Yes, sir. It began in 325 AD. Jesus never knew anything about the religion of Christianity. No. In fact, his name wasn't even Jesus. English wasn't around 2,024 years ago, beloved brother and sister. So when the pastor said there's only one name, one name by which a man can be saved, that's the name Jesus. I would challenge my brother pastor on that assertion. Yes, sir. Because if that man that you are referring to who was here 2,024 years ago, walked into your church sanctuary and you called him Jesus, he wouldn't answer you because his mother didn't name him that. His mother didn't speak English. And the language that a baby speaks is called the mother tongue. Why is your language called your mother tongue? Because as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, mother is the first teacher. See? So we have not been taught to think logically. So when we sit down and talk to some of our people and they start talking to us about their life and you see so many bad decisions that was made. He's like, well, brother, why did you do that? That didn't make sense. Sister, why did you do that? That didn't make sense. Our lives are turned upside down. Many of us, our personal lives are a mess. Not because of what the white man did, even though his technology rules the present world. He ain't completely left out of it. However, we make decisions based upon faulty thinking. So when we say Islam is mathematics, and the minister said a messenger told him what she was telling me. <laughs> if you teach it properly, you teach the people how to solve their own problem. In other words, a true servant of God empowers the believer with the kind of teaching that doesn't make you dependent upon your preacher, don't make you dependent upon your email, don't make you dependent upon your minister, but empowers you yes, to master the circumstances that are in your life. Using the word of God and your understanding of God and self and the time and what must be done. We were given in our lessons 
not a mystery theology, not a spook God theology. We were given what is called a mathematical theology. The Supreme Wisdom Lessons, which is a part of what Allah gave to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to guide us. There's a section in it called, drum roll please, The Problem Book. <laughs> and Master Far Muhammad, he says that this is given to you to see your condition in a mathematical way. See, math is the science of problem solving. We got problems, brother and sister. Yes, sir. In the corporate world, they say, oh, don't use the term problems. Say we have challenges and opportunities. That's the politically correct term. So if you don't, if you don't like the raw, unvarnished truth, we got problems. Then let me say it in a language you understand. We have challenges and opportunities yes. <laughs> in the community and in our lives. But I like problems because a problem has a solution. Every problem has a solution. That's the good news. Do you know Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his hadith, he said this, for every disease, Allah has created the cure. In other words, for every problem, because literally in the English language, the word disease is dis-ease. Something that disturbs your peace. See? I know we think of disease as High blood pressure, diabetes, Alzheimer's, cancer. Certainly those are diseases. But what's in our life that's disturbing our peace? What's in our life that won't allow us to rest comfortably at night? What's in our life that won't allow us to feel joy and happiness and peace, contentment of mind? How many of us know it ain't normal to always be worried? It ain't normal to always be filled with anxiety, to be plagued with grief. That ain't normal, but unfortunately for many of us in the black community, that has become a daily burden. We can't hardly think of when was the last day of our life. Our minds wasn't weighed down with some heavy concern, some heavyweight worry that we had, some, something that's unresolved that keeps us from being fully ourselves. Do you know Master Far Muhammad, when he came among us, he didn't talk about converting us to Islam. He gave us six words. Accept your own and be yourself. Your own self is a righteous Muslim. But you can't be yourself with a whole bunch of unresolved problems. That's right. Yes, sir. So Islam is mathematics. That's very important to help remove those barriers from our life that keep us from showing up as who we really are. Our beautiful self, mm -hmm. our pleasant self, our happy self, mm -hmm. our cheerful self, our committed self, mm -hmm. our honest self, our talented self, our gifted self. Mm -hmm. So we call Master Far Muhammad, we give him the title that we used to use in Christianity, the Savior. Because what he taught us, our utilization of it, saves us from living a life of being in constant, a constant state of being other than ourselves. Do you know what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said? He said, 
if you believe what I teach about how to eat to live, it'll solve all your health problems. If you believe what I teach about God, it'll solve your spiritual problems. If you believe what I teach about the separation, it'll solve the racial problems in America. See? So everything that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad offered to us is the solution to problems. But because they are mathematical and they're logical, most people don't want to have nothing to deal with it. See? I was on a podcast last night called Closing the Gap. And we were talking about what you read in the back page of the final call that I've recently published a book on, The Muslim Program. Yes, sir. And in point number four, many people in the political world, they don't like point number four. Because in point number four, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, now I've given you the first three things we want. We want freedom. That's number one. We want justice. We want equality. The first three, we want freedom, justice, and equality. But he said, if we can't get that in America, then we believe that we should have the opportunity to have a separate independent nation for black people. So because of that, they said, oh, Elijah's a separatist. And we like Dr. King. He's an integrationist. So they put these two great ones, these two great sons of Georgia, sons of Baptist preachers, powerful men. They put them as polar opposites of one another to keep them from coming together. But in 1966, they did something the enemy didn't like. They came together. And Elijah and Martin sat down as brothers. And they began to talk about how they could go forward working with one another. Yes, sir. See? Now, why, why you don't like separation? We some 60 plus years on the other side of integration. And right now, right now, beloved brother and sister, all of the so-called gains of integration are under attack. Proving that the rulers of America have no intention of sharing America equally with the descendants of her former slaves. When you get an opportunity we may just have to come and unpack it. Yes, sir. But when you get an opportunity, the National Urban League just released their report, The State of Black America 2024. And one of the presenters who was on a podcast with me last night, he talked about how in this report, now think about this. There's a wealth gap. You know it even if you've never studied it. Because we live in one community and the descendants of our slave masters, they live in another community. That's right. But they say, unless something drastic changes, it will take 182 years to close the wealth gap. That's according to what the brother reported on the podcast last night. I want to read the document myself so I can become informed on what their findings are. Because we have to be right and exact down to the modern time. They might can dial their heat down a little bit. I, I like heat, but I don't know if I'm generating heat, but they can dial it down a bit. Y'all cold or hot? Uh -huh. Who's both? <laughs> my brother said both. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to try to let, hurry up and land this plane. We might have to make it a part, too. But look at what Master Far Muhammad gave to us in the problem book that is a part of the Supreme Wisdom Lessons. And these problems, they're word problems. And they describe our condition in a mathematical way. He says, after learning mathematics, which is Islam, and Islam is mathematics, it stands true. You can always prove it at no limit of time. Then you must learn to use it to secure some benefit while you are living. That is luxury. 
money, good homes, friendship in all walks of life. Sit yourself in heaven at once. This is the greatest desire of your brothers and teachers. Now you must speak the language so you can use your mathematical theology in the proper term. Otherwise, you will not be successful unless you do speak well, for she knows all about you. A mathematical theology. A mathematical, a logical, or reasonable study of God. Now, the Bible in two places, Old Testament and New Testament, because some don't like the Old Testament. The Old Testament was about law. If you disobey God, we stone you. So a lot of people don't like the Old Testament. I had to give it both sometime when we can. Psalms 82 and 6, I said, you are gods. All of you are children of the most high. Jesus answered them in John 10 and 34. Is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. That's mathematical theology. Because this means that from our study of God, we see our connection to him. And as I heard my beautiful brother and friend, student minister Nuri Muhammad say, see, this means that whatever is true about God is true about you. Let that sell into your thinking. Take that home with you. Think about it Monday morning. Whatever is true about God it's true about you. See? How come Rev ain't never taught you this? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what puts the board in our back as men when we become followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan. See, they want you to think that the, the brothers in the nation are just these fanatical zealous who want to kill white people. See, that strength, that discipline, that unity that you see, it is the fruit of a spiritual root. See? Because when you turn on the black man and the black woman to who we really are, see, we lift our head up. We ain't ashamed of being black no more. We ain't walking around thinking we some second class citizen. See? We're able to stand with our shoulders back, with our head held high, and embrace the beauty of how God made us. Yes. I know you like in Black History Month to talk about being kings and queens. But I'm not a gambler and I don't play cards, but when they say, I see your kings and queens and I raise you gods, or as Jay-Z said in one of his lyrics, what's a king to a god? A king is a monarch. You can't have a king until you have a government. But you are before the governments of this world. You go all the way back to the creator and his self-creation of himself. That's how old you are. You don't have no birth record. That's right. You don't have no beginning. You don't have no ending. You come directly from God. And that's why the Leakey family and other anthropologists who have searched the earth for the origin of man. Their search always takes them to Africa in places where the black man lived. That's right. That's right. And every one that they find, that one had a mother and a father. Yes, sir. And their mother and a father had a mother and a father. Go ahead, you go all the way back to God. 
You are from him. What's true about him is true about you. Why can't we accept that and embrace that and walk in that? All praise is due to Allah. I think it's preferable than accepting, embracing, and then walking and being inwards, don't you think? Yes, sir. Because that's an identity that we've accepted, embraced, and we walk in our inwardness. We try to be Hall of Fame inwards, world star inwards, H inwards in charge. And that's a vulgar term. That's not a term of endearment. Who's endeared to inwards? Inwards ain't endeared to other inwards. How is it a term of endearment? When you say that, it's normal as an exclamation of outrage and hatred against another black person. Yes, sir. You won't get no warm and fuzzy feelings talking about N-word. No. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad forbade us from using it. He said, use brother. Use sister. Now, those are terms of endearment. Yes, sir. Because when I call you my brother, I'm identifying we have a special bond, a special relationship. Even if we don't have the same mother or the same father, that's obvious. We come from the same God. That's right. So it's even deeper than blood. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. <clears throat> now, God uses math to solve problems. God's. Your father. Uses math to solve problems. See? So once you know your God, you got to learn, how do I be myself? So you got to study how God is. I think it's intriguing that in the Quran, Allah uses language that communicates mathematical procedures. And all my people ask forgiveness of your Lord. Then turn to him. He will send on you clouds pouring down abundance of rain and add strength to your strength and turn back to guilty. Oh, Allah is involved in addition. It even says he it is who sent down tranquility into the hearts of the believers that they might add faith to their faith. And Allah's are the hosts of the heavens and the earth and Allah is ever knowing why. So he uses addition to solve problems. But he also uses subtraction. And when he made slumber fall on you as a security from him and sent down upon you water from the clouds that he might thereby purify you and take away from you the uncleanness of the devil mm. and that he might fortify your hearts and make firm your feet thereby. He uses subtraction and keep up prayer at the two ends of the day. And in the first hours of the night, surely good deeds take away evil deeds. This is a reminder for the mindful. In many places, Allah's use of subtraction is to remove from the believers their evil. In 66 and 5, he will remove from him his evil. And 48 and 5, that he may cause the believing men and the believing women to enter gardens wherein flow rivers to abide therein and remove from them their evils. 47 and 2, and those who believe and do good and believe in that which has been revealed to Muhammad and it is the truth from their Lord. He will remove their evil from them and improve their condition. 66 and 8, O you who believe, turn to Allah with sincere repentance. It may be your Lord will remove from you your evil and cause you to enter into gardens. 94 and 2, and he removed from thee thy burden. So God adds what you need. He takes away what you don't need. How many of you know he's a multiplying God? Surely Allah wrongs not the weight of an atom 
And if it is a good deed, he multiplies it and gives from himself a great reward. Wow. Moreover, it continues, the parable of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is as the parable of a grain growing seven ears in every ear a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies further for whom he pleases and Allah's ample giving knowing. 42 and 11 reads the originator of the heavens and the earth. He has made for you pairs from among yourselves and pairs of the cattle too, multiplying you thereby nothing is like him. And he is the hearing, the seeing. But he also uses division. Speaking of the people of Moses. And we divided them in the earth into parties. Some of them are righteous and some of them are otherwise. <laughs> and we tried them with misfortunes and blessings yes, sir. that they might turn. 3 and 179, he separates. He says, Allah will not leave the believers in the condition in which you are in until he separates the evil from the good. 8 and 37 continues that Allah may separate the wicked from the good and put the wicked one upon another one, then heap them together, then cast them into hell. These indeed are the loser. Wow. Islam is mathematics. I want to close this message with a look at the practicality of solving the problems of life. In researching this subject, we happened upon this particular text is very popular, written a long time ago. But I like the author who wrote this in the introduction. It's called How to Solve It, A New Aspect of the Mathematical Method by G. In this quote, he says, I believe the most important part of thinking that is developed in mathematics is the right attitude in tackling and solving problems. Sometimes a problem comes to us and our attitude towards it becomes an impediment in finding a solution to it. And I don't know about you, but sometimes a problem comes and it may produce fear. A problem comes and it may produce anxiety. A problem comes and it may produce any range of emotions. And then when Allah bless you to get over it, you're like, man, I was upset over nothing. Yes, sir. <laughs> And it shows that the attitude and our emotional state to the problems of life interfere with the solution. So part of what we have to do is develop the right attitude toward problem solving. He continues, we have problems in everyday life. We have problems in science. We have problems in politics. We have problems everywhere. The right attitude for problem solving may be slightly different from one domain to another, but we have only one head and therefore it is natural that there should be one general set of tactics to tackling all kinds of problems. My personal opinion is that the main point in mathematics teaching is to develop these tactics of problem solving. Tactics, strategies to solve the problems of life. One of the things that he says, first, identify the problem that needs to be solved. Next, gather information about the problem, including relevant data or background information Break the problem down into smaller pieces. This will make it easier to find a pattern or solution. Hmm. Have you ever heard the old phrase, how do you eat an elephant? 
one bite at a time. How else can you eat it? <laughs> so when you have a problem in life, don't become overwhelmed. See? Remember Allah first. Put him on your mind. He's a problem solver. And he wants to empower you and I to solve our problems. But it ain't a mysterious way. I mean, my God, if you were hungry and you prayed for food, you think bread going to fall out of the sky? Now, unless you like the people in Gaza and they literally dropping food rations from the sky, ain't no bread going to fall out of the sky. Somebody somewhere had to take a mathematical formula, also called a recipe. <laughs> and put flour, eggs, oil. My sister here, Sister Mirda, she knows how to cook and bake. Brother Gary's around here somewhere. They understand you ain't getting no food unless some mathematics is involved. Yes, sir. Now, some of the old great mothers, you know, they're so good. You know, they can reach in with a, I need a handful of this, a handful of, a pinch of this, a pinch of that. That's just because you're the original woman. Yes, sir. And you are mathematics in your person. Yes, sir. You don't always need it to be wrote on a piece of paper. And it come out and then make Betty Crocker shame. Yeah. <laughs> Big mama shame Betty Crocker every day of the week. Sarah Lee ain't got nothing on my dear. <laughs> but anyway, he continued. Write down what you know about the problem. This will help you see what information is missing and what assumptions you are making. Wow, that's big. Y'all know that old saying. I don't want to say it. But when you assume, you know the rest. You know what. Once you clearly understand the problem, begin brainstorming possible solutions. Once you have generated a list of potential solutions, it's time to start testing them out. Islam is mathematics. And a lot of times that fear, that anxiety, that grief, that heaviness that a problem creates in our life, Results from assumptions. See? You start making an assumption without getting actual facts first. See, that's another lesson we get when we come into the nation. Actual facts. See? That's a part of the goal of Master Far Muhammad to make us into gods. Because even though David said it and Jesus said it, there's a work that has to be done to make it a reality in the life of black people today. We are God by nature, but in reality, we have been made into the Negro by our enemy. Because he broke us like you break a horse. He was trying to make us a tool of his service in the building of the empire that is America. So work has to be done. Ask the work of Minister Farrakhan today. Ask the work of those of us who are his students and helpers. Our job is to give to our people that necessary teaching and training that activates your nature and then feed that nature that you be become or grow into your original self, which is God. So we have to when problems come, think mathematically. I don't know about you, but I've learned to keep a pad and pen by my bedside. Because sometimes it's something about falling off to sleep. You know, minds start coming up with ideas. And when I was younger, I think I used to could remember them when I woke up in the morning. And you know, I probably could be a millionaire by now because at a certain point, I lost the ability to remember them ideas. They were million dollar ideas. I said, I'll write it down in the morning. Morning came, I forgot it. So write down what you know about the problem. Don't make assumptions. Think about possible solutions. And then start trying to identify the solution that you want to test. 
He said, try to find a way to model the problem mathematically and then experiment with different solutions to see which ones produce the best results. Draw a picture or diagram. This can help visualize the problem and see relationships between different elements. So in other words, there's a work that we have to do to solve certain problems. You got to think, you got to write, you got to research, you got to gain, gather together facts. And then see if your problem, if you can diagram it in some kind of way. Because pictures help us to visualize real life situations. One of the great tools that they use oftentimes what they call a Venn diagram. You can look it up. I don't have time to go deeply into it, but it helps you to see how certain things are related to one another. Because many times the problems in real life are the problems of relationships, professional relationships, personal relationships, and those problematic relationships stem from our relationship or lack thereof with God. And the last point I give you today, he says, ultimately, the goal is to find a logical and effective solution. If you can do that, you can be confident that you found a mathematical solution to your life problem. Persevere. There is no unsolvable problem in real life. So don't. Give up. Keep working at it until you find a solution. Allah has 99 attributes, 99 names. In most of the collections of his attributes, the last one, the 99th one, is sabor. What does sabor mean? Most of the time is translated as patience. But what it really means in Arabic is perseverance. See? And do you know that in the Quran, not only does Allah have certain characteristics that identify him, but also the believers. And the chief characteristic of the believer is sabor or perseverance, patient perseverance. See, the quality of being able to pursue the solution to a problem, even though you ain't solved it yet, but you pursue it with the right attitude that Allah will bless you to solve it while you continue to work on its solution. Very, very critical. Because I don't really like the English word patience a whole lot because we have made it to mean wait. Now, it don't really mean that in its denotation. But most of the time when we tell somebody to be patient, we mean wait. Which means don't be active. Don't persevere till you get an answer. Don't pursue it until you get a solution. Just wait. Y'all know how we like to tell the bill collectors. Uh, Mr. Muhammad, uh, we want to know when you're going to pay your bill, sir. Man, you got to wait on it. Stop calling me. Click. But patience is an action word. And when you read the English translation of the Quran and Allah says, seek assistance through patience and prayer. Don't you get in your mind. I'm just going to go get on my prayer rug and then I'm going to go have a seat. You would have the wrong understanding. You got to think like Drake. Drake said, I pray. Then I get up and go after what I prayed for. See? So when you have the right understanding of perseverance, you see it as a part of math, a mathematical approach to solving a problem. I don't know if it's true, but 
Because I ain't an Edison fan as much as I'm a Lewis Latimer fan. Lewis Latimer was the black man that they say uh, actually did the experiments that Thomas Edison gets credit for. But they say of Edison, he tried a thousand times and failed. But he only needed to be successful once. And we're still talking about him. Because he's supposed to have given us light. The electric light. See? But he persevered. He persevered. He persevered. He experimented. He tried this out. He tried that out. He didn't quit. And we are the beneficiaries of his experimentation. We wrote a book entitled, When You Get Into Trouble, Nurse from Your Holy Quran, Volume 2. In it, there is a section called Islam is Mathematics. <laughs> and a couple passages I share with you as we close. The journey of faith known in Islam as the Sirat al-Mustaqim, the straight path, is a joyous journey, but it is not a journey free of problems. The problems faced by the believer may be solved with a mathematic, i.e. logical approach to whatever problem we may face. Those who study Islamic law may be familiar with the concept of ijtihad, Ijtihad is defined briefly as the independent or original interpretation of problems, not precisely covered by the Quran, Hadith, and scholarly consensus. So what am I saying here? That in the religion of Islam, and when you're trying to solve a problem, you first consult the Quran. Then you consult the Hadith. But after that, Allah says that you have the right to logically look at a problem and ascertain or work out its solution. So this concept of mathematical problem solving is baked into the religion of Islam. Because there are certain things you may not be to specifically see that it's clearly in the Quran or the Hadith about a problem in your life. So you then have to think logically because Allah has given to the human being the most superior intellect of all the creatures. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I find it fascinating that man is relatively small in stature, especially in comparison to the great blue whale of the ocean. But yet a little five foot man that's a marine biologist can go in the laboratory and devise a plan to pull this huge creature up out of the depths of the sea. And before you know it, he's laying inside of a warehouse on a table and a little man is cutting him open, dissecting it. So the human being may be one of the smaller creatures in comparison to other great creatures of God. But the brain of man, the brain of woman, the mind of man, the mind of woman is the superior intelligence of the universe. That's why the scriptures over and over again describe God dwelling in human form. He's Al Hakim, the all wise. He's Al Alim, the all knowing. And he dwells in human form. So your intelligence is on a higher level. You don't have just knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, but you even have intuition. See? In the black community, there's a such thing as seers. Mm. So most of the time, it's the woman that's the seer. The man, we can only see what's in front of us. But God have created the woman in such a way that there are some women that are wise in our community and their wisdom. If you look at the history of black people in America, that wisdom was sometimes say, child, I know you get ready to go such and such a place. I, I wouldn't go if I were you. And you wonder how she even know you were going there. 
Maybe that's the she that's in problem 13 where it says, and she knows all about you. <laughs> the last slide. Thinking mathematically about problem solving. We have to ask ourselves the question, does my problem require the addition of something that I'm lacking or in need of? Does my problem require that I subtract or eliminate some problematic thing that is currently a part of my life? You can't be in bad health, but you won't eat right and you smoke and you drink. So you got to subtract narcotics, you got to subtract alcohol, you got to subtract intoxic, you got to subtract anything that's negative based upon what your problem is. In fact, about it, even if you got good health, you don't need to have none of that. Is my problem of such a nature where I may be in need of the mathematical principle of the multiplication of my efforts in order to achieve my goal? You know, you can be doing not be doing enough. See? Oh, you know you trying to save to buy a house. But now if all you're doing is five dollars a month into your savings, you know, yes, that ain't gonna work. No, See? You be waiting a long time to get that down payment up. Or you gotta find a way to multiply your effort. Maybe my problem requires the more equitable division of my time and resources among a competing set of priorities or duties. If we as believers develop this capacity and utilize this approach, we will find ourselves enjoying a more stress-free life as we pursue victory along the journey of faith. So, beloved brothers and sisters, I pray and I hope that we have shared something with you in this message today that will help you see not just the religious side of Islam. Because remember, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says Allah gave us Islam as a religion. Which means that Islam is not really a religion. It's given as a religion. But Islam, according to the Quran, is the nature of God. And it is the nature in which he created the human being. So, so when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say Islam is mathematics, see, it means the nature of God is logical. The nature of God is rational, is reasonable, is scientific. You don't have to suspend your thinking ability, your intelligence to have a relationship with God. And consequently, you must bring that kind of logical mind and attitude towards solving the problems of life. So may Allah bless us all with the light of understanding. I leave you as I came before you in the greeting words of peace and paradise. As-salamu alaykum. <laughs>